guys, this is going to be the last time I probably do a, not the last time, but probably for a while I'll probably do, um, I won't be doing market review slash, you know, weekly recap. I won't be doing that anymore. So, um, main reason is because of course I haven't been fully transparent. We kind of, uh, broke our rules on MT5 account and, and then I recently got more books that I haven't read. One of them is trading in the zone. We just got this in today. Um, I want to read this, become a better trader. And then Sam Walton made in America, four more books coming in. And you know, I have to spend more time reading. I'm also watching ICT currently, but I think I'm going to stop watching him for probably a while and not, you know, that he's a bad mentor or anything or like he's posting too much, nothing like that. It's because, you know, I really want to focus on myself and my trading just because, you know, you can watch all this you want, you know, you can watch all of, you know, all the ICT videos, all the, all the, you know, all the content you want. But if you don't, you know, put in the work and the hours, then of course you're not going to get the success you want. And that's something that has been transpiring inside of me haven't been putting in enough time in the charts and we did change our layout because i do believe you know after this l we're gonna bounce back so let me show you all the funded accounts one last time before i go so like i won't be you know it might be a long break but it might not it depends you know i probably will come back whenever i pass a funded account challenge um and get funded and have a withdraw so not phase one or phase two i actually want to get funded and i want to get a withdrawal and, you know show a certificate and um a withdraw statement so that's kind of the reason why uh, I won't be coming in so soon, but this is, you know, a little update before I go. Um, it might be, you know, three weeks. It might be a month, two months, six months. It might even be, you know, a year. Who knows? But, you know, eventually I'll be back. That's all I know. Um, it just depends, you know, how, how good we become of a, of a trader. And this is the MC4 account. We're down 3.2%. And we are still in drawdown, of course. But this is not the account that I am mad about or the one that made me furious it's the mt5 one because i kind of broke my rules on there i said i was only going to trade gold so this is what i mean this is what i mean about the mt5 account we broke our rules we're basically down four percent even worse than the mt4 account if i'm being real so this one um we basically are down 200 aka four percent and the max is 400 so this is the mt5 account didn't trade gold it was aud jpy where we're one click trading aud jpy we bought, then we sold, then we bought, and we bought, and then we eventually got stopped out. So it was like a madness. I'm not going to lie. I was revenge trading because of the gold trade we took previously, and it was not during a kill zone. So that's kind of another reason why we didn't, you know, follow our plan. So let me show you the charting. So if I come here to AUD JPY and I show you, um, basically this is the daily this is the four hour chart so on the daily time frame you can see we are kind of inside the zone we are inside this range and if we go from our fibonacci tool from low all the way up to this high you can see that we jumped into a discount and then we're eventually back up in the premium so we're kind of consolidating but what i also saw was a fair value gap in here on the daily chart what i saw was a fair value gap and i wanted this fair value gap to hold so that was kind of my bias going in so this is on the four hour chart you can see that we have buy side up here, buy side liquidity, and then we have our sell side gets swept right here. This is basically our another fair value gap in there that was kind of giving me that buy model. Our entry was probably the problem. So if I'm being honest, and this is a you know buy side liquidity and this is sell side, sell side got swept, and then eventually we're rallying up to the buy side. Something I should have seen. This is on the one hour time frame. You can see that we are still inside this busy, aka um, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, the buy side. What I also saw was another fair value gap in here, but that doesn't matter because sell side got swept from the previous day. Um, if I, you can see 7, 17, all the way to the 18th, 18th uh, swept it. And then if you go, this is on the one hour chart, if you go to the 15 minute time frame, um, you can see our entries through like the middle of the night, one o'clock. 130 mind you this is like 12 for me 12 around there you know reason for entry was the sibi right here there's a big sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency a sibi or i mean i didn't enter just thinking you know we we're gonna go lower um i thought we were gonna go higher actually because we swept this low right here not expecting this to become an inverse but if you do go to the five minute time frame this is our entry number one entry number one we saw this inverse and then we created another so we basically created a balanced price range and that was kind of my you know ultimate take right there i was like oh yeah we're going higher i'll put my low below i'll put my stop below the low and we swept this low right here we had the bpr and now i expect the price to drop lower and that's kind of what i entered off of entered off of the balanced price range twice so first one was the cba becoming an inverse and that was my first take wrong because we swept sell side and then eventually we went higher i was like all right we're gonna drop lower after retracing now because this is ote let me get in on the breakout 
and basically that didn't happen either so we got swept our stop um above this high and then we went again and we entered again because we thought the balance price range was going to hold this time little did i know we got out again and we lost again so this was like three trades in a row or actually so we got mm, two of them wrong i don't know why i kept trading the third one was wrong for sure so that was just the emotions that got to me and we lost on the lower time frame confluences this is why a short we entered a short we were targeting these lows and eventually we got stopped out we had to stop right above uh hey, this is the account metrics right now um it was euro so one 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 two six three right here and then our stop was our stop loss was one two three twelve so one two three stop loss was pretty high up there it was at the high i bet and a little bit above because ftmo um, prices are different than a cap because money cap so this was our trade right here it didn't pan out at all and we did get stopped out eventually so what did i learn about this trade here is you know we have to look at the higher time frame picture and you can see price is just chopping price is chopping it goes to the 15 minute you can see of course we swept multiple areas of liquidity and we did have that five minute city but that wasn't enough confluence and i did use this one as more of a confluence but even then that you know wasn't a clear picture it wasn't it was coming to the end of the session and the inverse wasn't going to hold i mean truly honest why because we already swept so much buy side liquidity up here and up here that price wants to go back up and so basically we're going to be limiting the markets we're viewing and we're going to have risk on and off scenarios with these with indices you can only have smt and the six sister approach i wouldn't say you know you can have a, a correlated market other the other indices inside of your indice bubble do have a what fair value gap that ict was talking about um on his one of his videos um the recent video actually the second recent and if we go to the daily chart here you can see we're inside this sibi and you know price doesn't look like it wants to get out of it i mean honestly keeps rejecting it and if we go to the four hour time frame you can see clear more clearly we wicked up into it multiple times and we just don't want to go below it we perfectly are inside this one right here but if you go to the two hour time frame you can see we are just chopping um this range right here boom boom we don't we haven't got out of this range so the market is looking a little bit scuffed if i'm being honest it doesn't look too good if i'm being real um it's not really good trading conditions i would rather see this trading condition right here we want to go lower than buy side we'll get swept i mean sell yeah buy side will get swept then we'll go lower but if we want to go higher sell side will get swept then we'll go higher and no clear price action as to where it wants to go inverse fair value gap respected low high lower low so this would kind of be your breaker if you want to call it a breaker you know clearly if you want to you don't have to we want to go higher i'd rather see a sweep of that low right there and then go higher since we did get this one right here and then we rallied had a little uh, retracement this is where you know our trade went wrong because we saw this get swept and then i expected price to automatically go higher but it didn't because the session was coming to an end and in new york session am is probably the best option to get in and new york um New York open midnight open is probably a little bit better than the weekly time frame on euro i was just talking about this with y'all we're inside that busy same thing with dollar you know we're stuck inside either a busy or a sibi with euro it's the busy these internal ranges but on the hard time frame we're stuck inside this internal range of liquidity this external i mean this is internal i'm about to look at the seasonal tendencies and clt data for sure to see where we're actually going for a, so and i'm just wait see for a clear picture on the four hour gu same thing sibi we're hitting this two hour busy right here um if you go to the two hour time frame you can see it more precise that's the busy right there boom boom we're bouncing right on top of it and have a market structure shift to go lower maybe we retrace and then go lower a premium then go lower for gold gold did hit that one day fair value gap um inverse and today is just rallied higher it didn't come back down at all um on the one hour time frame you can probably see a breaker yeah so you have this breaker right here which is a low high lower low and then we go up higher this would probably be your breaker right here and then you could have got in right before you know the actual news and all that came out for uh gold and you could have your stop right below this low because that is the sell side liquidity that you don't want to see be purged and then the buy side up here you could have targeted that for the weekly time frame um this high right here but we are kind of drawn to that uh sippy so um that's kind of my take right now nasdaq order blocks busy never 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 say never one month chart you can see we're probably going to use this as an inverse um for value gap 
on the monthly time frame i don't know why it's like this monthly time frame inverse one week it looks good one day you can see that we have multiple fair value gaps i i feel like this is way overbought you see this high get purge we drop lower we retrace we do have a busy right here but price never comes back down into that one i feel like this wouldn't be a good you know area to target or have price draw into it's low right here as soon as it swept it they're in 9:30. could have went and rallied higher you could have seen that that could have been your classification you could have used this uh consequent encroachment of this wick s m p 500 same thing happened we swept these highs we retraced lower and then we had a fair value gap on this one on nasdaq we didn't tuesday we came we rallied in there at 10 o'clock that could have been your no that's 10 o'clock it's 9 30 9 30 could have been your entry and between a sweep of these lows right there so i want to see price come back down but i don't think that's most likely to happen monthly time from we're reaching for that buy side liquidity dow jones dow jones baby dow jones we went way past that inverse inverse gone no more inverse buddy you want to look at the most prominent highs and lows that's kind of what i'm focusing that's why i kind of changed my charts i wanted again you can see the sweep of these lows all these lows getting swept that could have been you know an initial thought process since you know it's in inside the internal range we target the buy side liquidity on the weekly time frame this high up here four hour time frame perfect that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen hopefully you guys enjoyed my analysis and um i probably will be back in a couple of weeks once i refine my edge and i become a better trader whenever the time is there Whenever the time comes, I'll see y'all for sure.